Hello everybody and welcome to part 14 of Spiral the Dragon. Today we will be going to Nasty Nork with the 75 gems bringing us to a grand total of 11,500. Does that mean there's 500 gems in the Nasty Nork level? There he is. 500 gems, zero dragons. So yeah, while he's shooting us, we gotta collect all the gems. And yeah, his scepter no longer turns us to stone, but actually kills us. Yeah, it's not like the other dragons which just get turned to, or I guess crystal, or really stone. But crystal, well, we don't have that luxury, but he actually can die. Because he set his staff to kill. So now, we have to get these thieves, but these thieves are a little different than regular thieves. They don't carry gems or eggs, but they carry keys, and they're a lot faster than the regular thief. So we technically cleared out the first bit of the level, and we just have to get the thief. But you really have to cut corners to get the thief. As for the actual level, I wouldn't say it's too long, and this one actually doesn't open up the boss platform. It actually opens up this door, which leads us right to another thief. And already failed that by running into a wall, because he keeps going. He'll stop once he gets back, but... Good news is, though, is we can at least collect our gems. Now, there is one more level, as you guys can clearly see. I like to call it the bonus world, but it's, it's also like a level. Come on. Thank you. As if it's a question, like... How many times do I have to hit that guy to kill him? Now this one, if I'm not mistaken, actually opens up the boss platform. And now we have the rest of the level, which, once again, we have to chase Nasty Nork. I think Nasty Nork looks and sounds cool in this game. They brought him back in a hero's tale, but when they did, it kinda made him a retard. He's like, Why are you defeating me again? And he's like his underpants out of the You know what? They made him such a... In this game, well, it wasn't even uh, Insomniac or Sony that had rights to the Spire game anymore after that. They had sold it off. Nintendo did a good job with the Game Boy games, but as soon as uh, Hero's Tale came out, they kind of ruined it because they, they lost the traditional feel of Spyro. He still collected gems and all that, but... Okay, now we just have to charge with him. Now, um, you can't actually hit him while going like this. What you actually have to do is you have to wait until he gets to his platform. And once he's at his platform, you can flame him. But you don't actually defeat him there. It's funny that you can actually flame him because he's in the armor. And he gives us a 25. Which means we have 100 gems left. So that means... Okay, now this part of the level. This part can be can be pretty challenging simply because these platforms are actually going in and the slower you take or you can be like me and just die and you have to do the entire level over oh you do too so i'm probably just gonna speed this part up until i get back to where i was so I guess I can commentate over it, but really, not much to say after you have a fail like that. Only thing is, is we don't have to get the gems, so when he runs, we can actually chase him. But yeah, I'm definitely gonna speed it up. It's only gonna be like, less than a minute of footage I have to speed up anyway. It doesn't, really, it doesn't take long to get to him again. So, because look, we've already caught up to him. Yeah, try cutting corners and you freaking kill yourself in the game. Yeah, that's, that's the only problem with cutting corners. Some corners you can cut that like that. But sometimes charging against the wall doesn't actually stop you, which is kinda nice. But this level is just cool, Nasty Nork is cool. Still can't get over that they ruined it. So, this is probably where I stop speeding up the video and go back to just regular speed. Speeding up the video, speeding up the video. I still love when Game Guy does that in like his Jack and Daxter Let's Plays and stuff like that. Oh no. The platform. Already, set, boom. Chaka Laka. Two, three, four. That's all the gems. Nasty Nork has been defeated. Sorry I took so long. I kind of forgot about you. What about Ganasty Ganork? Nasty Nork is toast. So now there's order again in the Dragon Kingdom? 
Well, mostly. I've still got some treasure to pick up. What will you do next? I'd say the sky's the limit. Oh yeah, so we actually have run one of the credits. I don't think you can skip over the credits. But yeah, so that was the uh well, there's apparently a yeah, Hastings family that made this game. But you know, that was the game. Well, not really the ending of the game, but this is the final episode. Um, I hope you guys all enjoy this Let's Play. I'm not saying I'm signing off or anything, but what do you guys think? What was your favorite level? Uh, what was your favorite boss? Um, I'm gonna have a questionnaire at the ending of this episode where I want you guys to answer a few questions in the comments section. I want you guys to answer me what your favorite level was. Who was your favorite dragon throughout the story? Uh, who was your favorite boss? What was your favorite fodder? What you think they could have done better with a game of this quality? Remember, it's only on PlayStation 1, so they can't have like PS4 or Xbox One graphics or even computer graphics, so... Uh, was there a boss that you think could have been done a little better? Like maybe you made them a little more difficult? Some levels that they could have dumped down? Some levels that they could have increased in difficulty? What did you think of the final world? Who is your favorite voice actor of this list of dragon voices? Um, do you guys think that this this version of Spyro is better than the Spyro spin-off series that were no longer made by Insomniac? Like, um, I'll give you guys a few uh, games that you can choose from. Uh, Enter the Dragonfly was one. Uh, known for its terrible load time and kind of glitchiness. Um, it was still an enjoyable game. It wasn't the best game, but it was enjoyable. Um, what about Spiral Season of Ice and Season of Flame? Um, good games. Don't play them on emulator though, because they don't like to save. Um, what else is there? Um, hmm. Oh, uh, Attack of the Rhinox. No sheep were harmed during the creation of this game. A few norks, but no sheep. I like their wittiness. And now we're returning home. Which, we actually don't return home home, like we don't go back to the artisan home world. We actually go here with the final dragon of the game. Makes 80. So we have Magnus from the second world. Nasty's ancient history now. So, what's in there? I believe this is Nasty's treasure hoard. But the gate will not open until you have found everything in the dragon kingdom. Come back when you have reached 100%. So, we need all the dragons and all the gems to open that. So, it's open to us. Nasty's Loot. Now, this is a very interesting level. All the Spyro games kind of have like an extra end of the game world, at least in the regular trilogy. Um, what makes this one unique is like, oh look, I can't do anything. But, we have Infinite Glide, but we can only go so high because we actually have to unlock uh, Flight Heights by killing these thieves, unlocking keys to gates. Now, there are 2,000 gems, so there's 14,000 total in the game. So that's why you're going to see a lot of big gems. I don't even think there's any small gems, I think it's all 10s and 25s. Like, look, we're already going over 100 gems just with this first platform. And then I think we can make it over here. It's the highest, and then our key actually opens at that spot. If I'm not mistaken, that is. I could very well be mistaken. Though I do want to get these gems. Don't want to leave any gems behind. No gems, they're not allowed to freaking tally off. This level, I wouldn't say it's really a level. You can die here, yes. It can be a pain in the butt, but I wouldn't really consider it like a normal. Gotta, you know, worry about things. Apparently, I need another key. So, our flight height was slightly increased. So, now we can get over to this platform over here, which should be where our next key is to unlock. Okay. Can I actually. I can actually 
you up here. Come on, drop. Spiral drop. Yeah, so that's where our next uh, key is. You guys can see him back here, right? If you guys can't, I don't think you should even be watching videos because I'm pretty sure you'd be blind. I don't have the best eyes in the world, but come on, I can see him. So, let's get some more gems here. Some gems for our trouble. And then we have to go all the way back over here. I know, it's it's kind of weird that we have to do this. Unlock levels of, like, flight height by unlocking gates. And then there, the key thieves are now flying. And that's where the game gets annoying, because there's one. I think it's the final one. It's a real pain in the butt to get. So... Is this the one that just flies around the level, or is this the one that... I can't quite remember where this one goes. Okay, no, this is not the one that I'm, that I'm worried about. This is just a simple one. As you guys can clearly tell, it was not too difficult. And we can actually go up here and get this key. I mean, this door. And it looks like there's another door that we have to unlock, but this is the guy that I hate. Because he is in the worst possible area. You literally have to cut any corner possible. Or every corner possible, I should say. And this guy gets annoying. He does go back up top, though. So you do have a chance to catch up to him a little more every time you go around. But really, there's really no good shortcut you can take. Because he's just so much faster than you. Now this guy is where the game can get very, very annoying to deal with. See, it's like we're not even catching up at all. Now let's see if we can actually- No, you weren't supposed to do that game. Even though we're pretty much where we were last time, like it's not- Like we actually- Know, gain that much distance. See, this is the part, I think this is the final thief, too, in the entire level. It's just, he's not very easy to get, just... Did he just seriously fly through that? He flew through the ground. He cheated. He cheated. He got ahead of us by a lot because he cheated. What are you supposed to do when the game cheats? Okay, this is this is going to get annoying because there's no way we can literally catch up to him if we keep going that way. Uh, if I go this way, can I actually distract him and get him? My room's getting hot too. It doesn't help for playing video games. Like my legs cold, the, the entire room is hot. I don't know if you're actually supposed to. Are you supposed to take him on this way? I think you actually have to take him on this way because there's more corners to cut. It's just, this is one of those annoying end game challenges that you have to do. Yeah, see, I think we were actually supposed to take him this way. Because it seems that we catch up to him a lot faster than it this way. The spiral actually gains more speed if he turns. You'll notice that, like, look. He also seems to pick up speed. There we go, we got him. So now where was that door? In here, right? Yeah, because we reached the max uh, height. So now this should open up. See, it doesn't really give you anything but a gym. But what it does is unlocks the maximum height that you can fly in this area. Which means we can go and get the rest of the gems around here, which are just using these rockets. There's that one. And then there's a freaking turning so wide on this. Still missing a rocket though. We gotta get all these beautiful tens. This is one of the next one. We blew up. Some more tens. Up here. And then the final one. Which was 75. Now we can actually go up in here. Now this. This is where the game gets crazy. So 
what you want to do is you want to play one of those back off. Because no game in the entire Star Universe has this many high end gems. Look at that. All 25s. Every single one. It's funny though, he was turning his his hoard of money into into uh, creatures to fight. And that's everything. We beat Spyro the Dragon, guys. We beat it. So, let's hop in the return home portal one last time. Spyro the Dragon, you've defeated Ganasty Ganork, collected the dragon eggs, saved all the dragons, and recovered every bit of treasure in the Dragon Kingdom. How do you feel? I feel fired up, Bob. And I'm happy for the dragon world, of course. I certainly wouldn't want to spend the rest of my dragon days butting heads with Nasty Nork and his weird minions. What's a minion? Uh, never mind. You know what they say. For every good battle, you need a good adversary. And I felt that Nasty, in spite of his misguided nature, was a worthy opponent. Uh-oh. Here we go again! Now, the funny thing is, is there's not actually anything to do after you beat the game. If you want to go back and beat the game again, you can, but Nasty Nork doesn't actually return. Which I think the dragons reset. Is it the dragons reset? Or you can just start a new game, is what they're encouraging. But yeah, that was Spyro the Dragon. Um, what did you guys think of the final level there? The uh, bonus world, or Nasty's Loot, as it's called. I personally find it not that bad. It's an interesting one. It's not my favorite end of the game world. My favorite one is probably in Spiral 3, but it's also the spot where I can't beat it. I beat it like twice in my entire life, and it's so hard. Just simply because of the fact that, uh, um, it's just trial and error. Kind of like catching that one thief in uh, Nasty's loot. So now we're flying through, um, Haunted Towers. Now we're through um, Icy Flight. Why is it called Icy Flight? It's full of crystals and blue water. There's no ice in it at all. If anything, the other Crystal Flight could have been called Icy Flight. And now we're here at Nark Cove. I got credit to that guy who created Spyro. Now we're going back through the voices. I don't know if it's the exact same credits, or if it's just a continuation to the credits. Oh no, it's the same credits, because Michael goes on there again. All that voice acting in real Spyro was done by Carlos, and he changes um, into an actual actor, I think, in the second and third game, and then changes into another actor in to the dragon, or not into the dragonfly, um, Legend of Spyro. And additional thanks to Paul Rio, because now we're at, wait, did we, were we just in Nasty's world, then we went here? How did we go from Nasty to Twilight Harbor? Twilight Harbor made sense, because, you know, it's Twilight. No sheep were harmed during the creation of this game. A few norks, but no sheep. Yep. See, same thing as last time. And that's it. This time I think we actually do return home, don't we? I think we return home to the artisan world. Yes, we do. And we literally have collected everything. So the Solar Warlock signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed this Let's Play. And see you guys next time for a brand new Let's Play.